Hello. Blind Pew here. Well, I'm back between the Heart and Soul Nebulae, on the edge of the Formidian Rift. If you recall my last transmission, link on screen. Now, you will know that I am trying to unravel the mystery of the Formidian Rift. Last time, the evidence led us to look at the intersection of the Cassiopeia, Camelopardalus and Perseus star maps. We are about, here. The evidence appears to be leading us below and to the left of our current location, broadly, here. So, we need to find a location below and to the left of here, within the Ephods region, to remain consistent with the repeating message we investigated in my last transmission. At the lowest point of the Ephods region, directly below our current location, if we head left from here, we are soon outside the Ephods region. However, if we then progress on, towards the rift, we are soon back in the Ephods region. It appears to extend diagonally into the rift. If we follow that route to the very end of the Ephods region we get to here. Which is below and to the left of the Heart and Soul Nebulae. This is looking promising. Very promising. Setting pause for the very extreme bottom left edge of the Ephods region. There. Some way on now. And I've discovered a water world. Not as uncommon as you might think. Out here. And not long later, we have arrived at our destination. Oh look, already discovered by Commander the Lonely Astronaut. Doesn't look that promising then. Just scanning the local bodies, but I'm not finding anything of note. Some distance from the Heart and Soul Nebulae now, as you can see. Hum. That cluster of stars looks quite distinct, wonder if it is relevant? We need to press on and check some more systems in this area. There are only a few right on the edge, but we will check them all. No still no luck. I'm getting disheartened. But we will press on. Ho hum. I seem to have looked at most around here now, to no avail. Ah look, one more, out here beyond the edge. Charge that frame shift, Ben, my chief of engineering. Charging, pew. There seem to be quite a few moons surrounding a ringed gas giant in this system to check out, but still, nothing of note, well, other than this. A gas giant with ammonia based life, but that's nothing too unusual. This is not the ammonia based life we are looking for, and, nothing of note with the moons. I am quite despondent now. Has the Formidian Rift mystery defeated us, once again, well. I've surveyed this lower left hand corner of the Ephod system and come up with nothing. Once again, the Formidian Rift mystery leads to a brick wall. This mystery has a real feel of the gold rush of ancient earth history. Many went seeking riches, only to find fool's gold. I feel like we have found our fair share of that fool's gold today. Oh well. And on a minute pew. Something has just struck me. We are assuming each clue is a clue to the location of the mystery. But what if they are breadcrumbs? So, firstly, we are told to follow a line from Reorg to Recap, and keep going, to the edge of the rift. But then, we get a clue that the old woman's ship is called the Heart and Soul. So, we leave the Reorg to Recap line, and head towards the Heart and Soul Nebula, where we can see those. Then, we hear to the repeating message, Ephits, from the old woman's ship, and so we head to the region, which takes us beyond heart and soul, in a diagonal path out into the rift. We assumed, Ephits, was the destination, but what if it is just the next breadcrumb on along the journey? We know, from the other clue at the last transmission, that the boundary between the Camelopardalus and Perseus constellations is important. The, Ephits, region does not quite get us there. But what if there was something else, that was on the boundary, beyond Ephits, as the next step? And? Well, there is. Look, here, the MGC 1491 Nebula, right on the boundary we were looking at, in a direct line from our current location, in Ephits, out into the rift. That, is an astounding analysis, Ben. I am fully enthused again, though I am aware that Nebula has been investigated before, but your logic seems impeccable, so we will head there. Ben. 
Set the course and then help yourself to what's left of the Lavian brandy. Course is already set. Pew. As for the Lavian brandy, that ran up before we got within sight of the heart and soul, as I think you know. Did it? Really? Somewhat further on and we have reached the Frio Hippo sector. Time for a quick fuel scoop I think. And yet, further on, deeper into the rift. Scoopable stars are beginning to get a bit thin on the ground in this sector. A careful view of the star types en route is now required. But, of course, there is always time to marvel at the wondrous sights of this galaxy. As you can see, we are very much further on from the heart and soul than before, though both remain visible, like the gateway to the rift we are now in. Let's crack on. Friendship drive charging. Quite a few interesting sights out here, like this ammonia world. No signs that it has been colonized by the Thargoids though. I seem to have already discovered this system. Yes, look first discovered by Blind Pew. And again. Blind Pew. Hang on Ben, what is going on here? Call up the galactic map please. Is that waypoint you are heading towards still NGC 1491? No, Ben, you blithering idiot. Look, it's the Crimson Reef at the halfway point of the Heisenberg Murdoch Bridge across the rift, that we visited last time we explored the Formidian Rift. We should be here. We are literally thousands of light years off course. Em, um, sorry about that pew. Never mind. I'll let you off on account of your earlier analysis. We will basically have to continue down the center of the rift to get to NGC 1491. Along the area formerly known as the Poseidol Wall. No longer a wall for this ship, the Star Chaser. Further on now, actually heading to NGC 1491 for a change. And we have reached the Show Hippo sector. Heart and soul still visible there. On we go. A bit further on now, and even with a massive jump range of the Star Chaser, things are getting problematic. The course finder is not able to find a route more than a few jumps on. So we are having to select manually. See, course plot failed. Again. And, even then, take some roundabout routes to continue, due to huge gaps between systems now. Another water world. On this route there seem to be many, and I, by no means, have had time to scan them all. Feel free to bag a first discovery. Now, this is interesting, shining out, as it was, in the midst of the rift. Yes, see, an orange giant. This one has a radius 37 times that of Sol. More water worlds. And, yet more, water worlds. Terraformable. And again, terraformable. I would say that there is an above average level of potentially inhabitable or terraformable worlds in this region of space. Could we be onto something? Is this linked to the mystery of the Formidine Rift? Good lord, that landable planet is a big boy, isn't it? Can't resist a closer look, my word. Craters, within craters. Within, craters. This is a big one, indeed. And we are not in orbit yet, perhaps. This may be the largest crater I have encountered. Put it in the logbook, Ben. Very much further on, now. Heart and soul still visible, just as you can see over there. But more importantly, NGC 1491.
now clearly visible. The next jump should take us to one of the extremely bright stars just outside the nebula itself. Whoa. That is a bright one. Just this star in the system and nothing else. Klaatso star. Already discovered by Commander Kweg. congratulations. And there, ahead of us, lies NGC 1491. Somewhat muted by the bright, Klaatso star, behind us. Will Ben's hypothesis be true? Will we, indeed, find the secret of the Formidian Rift, within this nebula? Tune into my next transmission to find out. Incidentally, apologies for the lack of camera tracking, if you noticed, I use a thing called an Ed Tracker within the Star Chaser to capture footage for my transmissions, it has become irreparably damaged due to my clumsy crew. I will try and pick another up when I return to inhabited space. Until next time, when we crack the mystery of the Formidian Rift. Good luck commanders. And I'll see you out there. body, pew. I'm closing in on it now, Ben. Wow, look at that. It looks unpleasantly sharp. Are you getting the footage back in the ship, Ben? There is an almost skeletal quality to some of these parts. Yep, although I'm almost not believing what I'm seeing. Be careful out there, pew. Skeletal, or perhaps shell-like. I repeat, there is a resemblance to the barnacles here. This one is really weird. Okay, there is some sort of central structure ahead that looks somewhat different.